What is up and welcome back and today we're going to learn how we can increase our shooting range and we're mainly going to talk about arm mechanics and also body positioning. This really could have helped you out big time for that long distance shooting. So with that said, let's dive right in. Now I want to start off by mentioning that a lot of players don't have trouble shooting from within the three point line. I have seen all sorts of shooting techniques, elbow inward, all the way out, or something in between, even all sorts of stances. A really wide stance, right? More neutral and balanced, shoulders lined up with the feet, or even real close stance. And the reason why players don't have trouble shooting is because the distance is not too far. So a lot of players can generate enough force, right? Enough push for the ball easily. Now, a lot of players are going to have a hard time when it's the three point line or further out because now the technique matters a lot more, okay? Right here, it can feel a lot more natural. Again, you do hear a whole lot. Elbow jumper, right? The elbow's tucked in. Elbow jumper from the announcers on TV, right? But it's rare or you really never hear somebody say elbow jumper from way out here, right? Because it doesn't really happen because it's not going to work when you're that far out, okay? So that's why in this video, I am going to show you a method that you can utilize that's gonna help you out, like I said, a whole lot. Just improve your shooting overall and make it a lot more easier, a lot more natural. Because if you are struggling from back here, it could be that you don't have the mechanics down correctly, okay? so. Let's get into some details and I'm gonna to try to be as detailed as possible so you can get it down, okay? Now, one thing that's going to limit your range is going to be this arm right here, right? Your shooting arm. You wanna have a very good free range of motion on that arm because if you do have that elbow really tucked inside, you're not gonna get that much free range of motion. And I'll explain put the ball down just for a moment. If this arm is right here, right? You can see the elbow tucked inward. This is the range of motion that we get, okay? So that's gonna be generating force and then the rest of the force is going to come from this upper part. So force right here, then force like that, okay? Now look at, look at it when this arm is moved more outward, right? The elbow more outward. Look at that. You get more range of motion instead of just this right here. See, a lot more range. That means you can generate more power right here, more power for launching that ball, okay? So look at that, okay? So that simple human anatomy right there, mechanics, if you understand it, you're gonna know you can get more force having this unlocked, okay? And I'll give you a very good example so you can understand it. Take a look at a quarterback, okay? A quarterback, when he passing that ball for a touchdown long distance, 50 yards, 60, you don't really see a quarterback pass the ball like this with that elbow inward, right? That's gonna be for a short distance pass, maybe mid range if he's kind of flicking it up into the air, right? But long distance, no way. That's not gonna happen like that for 60 yards, okay? He's going to have to have all this unlock, free range of motion, where he can have that arm swinging all the way through, generating power, right? And then even on the release, he's gonna be swinging that arm through like that for that extra bit of force, okay? So that right there is going to cause that ball to fly really far, okay? Taking it back to basketball, same concept, okay? When you have more range, you can generate more power, okay? Bringing the ball back into this talk right here. And also, if you are using that method, this is not gonna look natural, right? Who shoots like this? Plus the ball is going to be stacked on the right side. I'm right-handed, right? So this right here is gonna be a lot more easier to hit the rim if I'm going like this, it could be easy, easy to throw it, even all the way over here, half court, without moving. 
going to be easy. It's going to be a lot more harder having that elbow tucked in, right? It's going to feel like more work. You're going to be outstretching yourself, okay? You can put this to the test yourself. I want to challenge you. Go home and try if you are shooting that type of way. See where it gets difficult, but don't move your feet. Just be standstill position. Shoot the way you shoot. Okay, that didn't feel too bad. Keep backing up. You're going to find out where your range is at. Okay, this feels a lot harder, like I'm really stretching out. This feels, I'm shooting a lot of air balls, right? Then use the other method. Go back. See how easy this is. It's going to feel easy. Like I said, easy all the way, even further back, okay? But, like I mentioned, this does not look like a shot. It looks more like you're throwing it, right? So what can we do to use the mechanics we talked about where it feels easy and smooth for the human body, right? But it looks like a basketball shot by turning your body, body positioning, okay? Steph Curry, one of the best shooters of all time, you look at his videos, right, how he shoots, the feet are always lined up like this. A lot of NBA players, they have that slight turn, right? What does that do for your shot? Lines up your shot. Also, you maintain having this arm unlocked, right? So you can keep the power of it. You see this? If you're squared, you can't really use this technique. The ball can get blocked a lot more easier on the right. But if you turn your body, look at that. Slight turn. Inward, now it looks like a jumper, right? Right there, okay? So you can see there is a method to everything. And I'm pretty sure Steph Curry has a team or he's been in the lab where they hook him up with all sorts of devices where they can measure his efficiency and how he's generating force. They can figure out, okay, this type of body mechanic generates this much force, okay? And which is going to be the most efficient, the most easiest to do and generate the most force. And that's how you find out what's going to work best. But like myself and many players out there, you don't have access to a place like that. So how are you gonna know what's generating more force or not? Easy, just what feels a lot more easier. You can test these things out, like I mentioned, challenge yourself, see what feels a lot more easier what is going to get the ball there more accurately, right? And it's all practice, again. You're not going to try it one day and then just have it down instantly. It's going to be practice and practice muscle memory, okay? Now I am going to give you one more that can help you out. Turning your body slightly, okay? You're going to say, hey, turning your body, that's going to make it a lot more harder to be more balanced. But think of it this way, okay? especially for long distance. What do you see in a game where you're up against the clock, a few seconds left, championship game, or even shot clock? You throw it like that, right? Players, when they throw the ball, what are they doing? They're taking a few steps, and then when they throw it, they turn their body. Why are they turning their body in the air, okay? Because they're trying to generate a little bit more power, energy, right? When you're like this, you're turning your body like that so you get more force more force okay a baseball player again mechanics he's turning his body extra speed extra power quarterback extra speed extra power distance basketball player if you're not using this method again you're limiting yourself okay you want to generate that extra power while you're in the air turning slightly okay and again you're not always going to turn, especially right here inside the three-point line. It's not necessary. Elbow jumper, easy. Elbow tucked in, doesn't matter. Further back, that slight turn can make the difference between maybe hitting the front of the rim or making it, right? All those things. And let me also show you, illustrate it this way. We take a look at the ball, right? Or let me set the ball down. If I'm, again parallel with my stance, and I'm shooting like this, all mechanics. Look at the height of my hand. I have the ball right here, right? The flick's gonna be around this height, right? Now look when I turn, get a little bit more height. You see that? Because it's just anatomy, the way my body's lining up, I get a little bit more height. 
See right here? Keep my hands straight. It's a little bit, right? Now you can imagine if you're turning in the air, look, stretching. Look, that slight turn. Right, I'll try to not lift my heel, right? But that turn, look, gives me a little bit more height. You see that? That's extra energy, extra push on the ball, okay? If you're holding the ball like this, you're raising up, you're lined up, a little extra push, okay? That's gonna be added range to your shot, okay? You see, there's a method to everything, and this is gonna help you out a whole lot. I want everybody out there to improve, you know? We wanna have good shooters out there, lethal shooters, okay? And the NBA, now the three, it's even more important to nail down that three, okay? And before I go, I wanna give you one more, okay? I almost forgot this one, don't wanna leave it out. It's going to be important also your stance. Inside the three, we say it's not as important, but as you're backing up, you see, I'm lowering my height with a wide stance. Right here is not that big of a deal if I can shoot this comfortably, but if I'm backing up over here, this wide stance is lowering my height. It's gonna make it where I have to use more energy to shoot, okay? Try to get that neutral stance, balanced stance, feet lined up with the shoulders or even more narrow. This right here, you're going to feel more springy, get more height, right? Then you combine all those elements we talked about. And it's all about stacking those advantages, those little details, right? And trying to make it next level, trying to be a professional. All the little details matter a whole lot, okay? So try to incorporate them in your game. And right here, going to give a little demonstration the first few shots feel pretty easy, nothing too forced, especially that first one feels like a free throw. The second one, again, pretty smooth. Again, nothing too difficult right there, especially with the technique. For this third one, I do have to concentrate a little bit more, but again, nothing forced, no overreaching. Again, feels nice, feels easy. This fourth one, I do miss. But I also feel that I am a little bit too wide for my liking once the release happens. So I come back and fix that stance a little bit more narrow and it feels real smooth off the release. So as you can tell, all the little details do matter. And like I said, it's not gonna be an easy fix. It's going to take time and effort, a lot of practice, get into muscle memory where you're not even thinking about it. You're not thinking about all these details we talked about. You're just doing it naturally, just coming up and pulling up and nailing those shots down, okay? So that's gonna be it for this video. And if you did like the information, please sub and like to really help me out a whole lot. And we'll be back next time with more. Until then, peace and much love, basketball family.